For more on this industry, we are taking a look at Athabasca Oil Sands Corporation. You just heard Dom mention it. They have 8.8 .8 billion barrels of contingent reserves. Sven Svarta is the CEO and president of Athabasca Oil Sands Corporation. He has 20 years of experience in this industry. He joins us now live from Calgary. Sven, welcome to the show. Great to have you. Um, let's start with Dom finished. At what point does do oil sands become economically available? Viable. There have been a lot of um, various articles written about this not being a profitable business. Well, first, thanks for being invited. Uh, oil sand, one should know that there are two different types of oil sands. You have mining industry and you have in situ. In situ means you actually recover it by drilling wells. Uh, there is a very, very large difference in economics with those two. Typically, mining needs probably more than 80 WTI to be economic. Uh, in situ, we should be fine at between 50 to 55 WTI, which is not a high price in today's environment. So I think it's very robust economically, and that's important to get out. And also, about 80% of all the resources that are left are actually suited for in situ recovery. Let's talk a little bit. Your company, Athabasco's, um, does not really, it, your focus is not mining, right? You use something called steam assisted gravity drainage, which makes it easier to extract the oil from the sand and it's cheaper. Where does oil have to be for your company to break even? It doesn't have to be at $112, right? In fact, you actually like the price of oil lower? Well, we always like the price of oil high, but it does heat the economy, economy up in Calgary if the prices go high. And as I said, steam assisted gravity, like we do, everything we have is in that category. We can easily make project economic at 50 to 55 WTI range. And, uh, and obviously for us, if it's in 70 to 85, that's a great range for us. And where are most of the world's oil sands now? It seems like Venezuela and Canada sort of dominate this particular industry. That's correct. And obviously with the problems investors have in Venezuela, uh, there's a lot of focus today on Canada. We see a lot of investors coming into Canada because they see it as a stable uh, area. We see a lot of big companies refocusing investments into the OECD countries because they want to stay away from the turmoil in the Middle East and North Africa as we see today and obviously it's a, it's a great place to be in Calgary now. On top of that, uh, Alberta is a place where you can do business. The regulatory environment is extremely sophisticated, uh, stable politically and also environmental, uh, what should I say, the environmental control they have is very, very high standard, as, as good as anything I've seen around the world before. Well, and Sven, I, we left it, we, I mentioned environmentalists are not necessarily uh, the biggest fans of oil sands, but tell us a little bit about the resistance that you get. As I said initially, there are two types of oil sands, and uh, what we are doing in Athabasca is in situ recovery by drilling wells. And if you look at the operations, they are very much similar to what you see in conventional oil and gas. We don't have any tailing ponds, we don't have any mining craters, and basically uh, we don't take waters from the ponds or rivers. Uh, the only issue I think we are high on is the emission side. But even if you look at that, you will find that the total emissions from a barrel what we produce is about the same, exactly the same, as a barrel you import from Nigeria today and use in the U.S. and much lower than a barrel of Californian crude. Why? So all in all, Sam, all in all, if you look at the environmental impact, there's a lot of disinformation and I hope the real picture comes through the press eventually. Um, Sven, why are, is there resistant by, resistance by some governments to using oil sands? I think it comes down to, again, uh, partly they don't know the story and uh, a lot of people don't bother really to dig enough. But if you dig enough into it, as I said, you will find that it's in line with most barrels you use in the States today. And if you add the ethical parameters such as Canada having no corruption, no, uh, 
or just say discrimination against minorities, women, no funding of terrorism, no warfare, you would probably find that the barrel of Canadian crude is probably the most desirable barrel in the world. All right. You know what, Sven? Unfortunately, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. That was Sven Sparta, CEO of Athabasca Oil Sands.